So in this video, I want to quickly go through uh, deductive and inductive reasoning in research and explain uh, how it affects, how it makes a difference at different stages of a qualitative study, not just at the stage of data analysis, as it is often assumed. So I'll go through the overall research design, uh, through uh, data collection, data analysis, and conclusions to the study, and compare how each of these elements is affected by either inductive or deductive reasoning. So first, the overall research design. So uh, for the inductive approach, uh, it's often used in exploratory research. So it's much more open-ended, uh, open open-minded, probably not open-minded, but open-ended and aimed at uh, learning, learning from the data, exploring the data, exploring the topic. So research begins with observations, field work, data collection without predetermined theory or hypothesis. So again, you're completely open. The goal is to generate theories or hypothesis. And uh, it's often, although it's generally dominant, very common in qualitative research, but especially in uh, methodologies such as grounded theory, which is, as you may know, which is specifically interested in developing theories or detailed explanations. And when it comes to research design and uh, deductive approaches, it's usually the aim is to test a pre-established, pre-existing theory or hypothesis. So the study begins with, with such theory, the study is designed in a way to test that theory, and very often the researchers want to, so the aim is also to test applicability of a certain theory or previous finding in a new context. Now data collection in uh, inductive approaches is also much more flexible and open, and researchers often immerse themselves in the study situation. And also when it comes to decisions about data collection methods, is also an open topic, a very flexible topic. Very often these decisions are being made and changed on the basis of what's happening in the study. Unlike data collection and deductive approaches where it's, it's much more structured, again, aimed to test a theory and usually pre-established because it's just much more difficult and rigorous uh, to develop uh, the, whole, the whole research design and data collection methods in this type of studies. Now, when it comes to data analysis, which is something that people usually focus on when they talk about induction, deduction, the inductive approach uh, is very exploratory. Again, exploratory, so everything is based on the data. Based on the data, you don't know what you're going to find. Based on this data, you are finding things. You're coding, creating codes. They are telling you about the data. Eventually, you're uh, you're developing themes. So you're learning about things from the data. You don't necessarily know exactly what you will learn about, what you will learn uh, prior to the study. And generally, the whole approach is much more flexible as well. People kind of go back and forth between the different data sets, sometimes change the methods slightly, the methods of analysis. So they are very responsive to the research situation. And when it comes to data analysis and deductive approaches, again, they are just much more structured because they are looking for specific things. So usually the whole structure, the whole procedure is pre-established, predetermined. So, so the researcher, uh, when it comes to, for example, coding and things like that, which is still possible in, in a deductive approach, uh, however, the researcher usually is very common to, for example, develop, uh, pre-establish a coding framework. So develop your codes or themes and just look for these things in the data. So basically taking things off the list. So you're not you're not interested in whatever will emerge, whatever the data will show you. You know what you're looking for. Very often it's about uh, just testing, as I said, testing the theory, the hypothesis. So just basically testing and checking whether something is in the data. And if it's in the data, how often, uh, how, how much is, is present in that data. So, uh, so as you can see, it's just much less exploratory and much more, uh, much more aimed to just find things that uh, that you previously decided to focus on. And now, finally, conclusions. And by this, I don't mean the conclusion to this video, but the conclusions of your study. So the conclusions of a uh, of a study where inductive reasoning was was followed uh, usually involve some detailed explanation. Very often, uh, developing a theory, as I said before. And even if it's not a theory as such, it's a detailed explanation of what was found uh, and, and why. So everything that you learned from the data. And when it comes to conclusions in a study following deductive approach, they usually are based around whether the theory or the hypothesis was uh, supported or dismissed. Sometimes uh, the researcher may, may suggest adjustments to that theory, but basically the point is to, uh, to discuss how and whether that theory was uh, was supported was found was uh, was supported dismissed or whatever accepted 
I confuse myself, <laughs> but, but, that's, but that's the conclusion. So you're focusing on that element. So this is it. I know it was pretty basic, but I wanted to review the key points of each. Uh, do let me know if you learned something new. Ask me questions in the comments if you want me to go through any of these points with a little bit more detail. And uh, like the video, share it with others if you know anybody who can benefit from this instruction.